Hello everybody. Welcome to the art tutorial on using uh, construction paper for collage. Um, I thought this would be a really good one for a couple of reasons. One, this is a really great exercise for kids. Kids can learn about the push and pull of color. They can learn how colors work off of each other. You can use uh, your imagination to create all kinds of different shapes. Um, you can use scissors or you can use a X-Acto knife. I myself am kind of an X-Acto knife person, but if you are a kid and mom doesn't want you to have that, let's go ahead and use a pair of scissors. So for this exercise, that is all you need, some construction paper, some scissors, some a glue stick, and a piece of paper to glue your project down on. So let's get started. First I want to tell you that um, throughout time artists uh, have used collage, but really there were some amazing artists and kind of what we're going to reproduce today is collage like Matisse made. Now Matisse was born in 1869 and he died in 1954. He is definitely one of my favorite artists and always has been. Um, his sense of color, his sense of uh, shapes and how to put them together I think is just magnificent. He's often been referred to as the collage king or the person who really uh, has the highest selling collages for sure. So Matisse started out, he was a lawyer. He came from an affluent family and so he went to law school, he became a lawyer, but he, um, he got sick uh, in his 20s, I think he was around 22, and he got an appendicitis. So he was bedridden for quite some time and uh, so his mom got him some paints to keep him occupied. So he learned uh, basically from by himself uh, to paint. He started painting these amazing paintings and he was really quite good at it. Uh, so he decided uh, later on that he was going to give up law in order to go to painting school. So he went to a couple different painting schools and became uh, one of the most famous artists we know of today during that time. However, uh, when Matisse was in his uh, later years, in his 60s, he contracted cancer. And cancer wasn't very well... Um, we didn't have all the drugs that we have today, so he had an operation which unfortunately left him uh, unable to walk and he was basically an invalid so you will see pictures of him with a in a wheelchair and this is really where the start of his collage work um, started because it was very hard for him to paint although he he did use um, an assistant and he drew with a very very long stick on the walls and created these amazing murals like Dancing Ladies and uh, some other organic abstract uh, forms. But he really started with some paper. So he had these large sheets of colored paper and he would cut out the, uh, the shapes. So that's what we're gonna do today. So I've just um, picked some colors. You just uh, Dollar Store has a great selection. Um, any of the craft stores. Uh, I didn't use the brown, but some, some fun colors. And I've pre-cut some shapes, which you see over here. So this, this is our palette that we're gonna work with today. Now I have a sheet of black paper or black board that I like to use as a background um, to, and you can get these uh, at the dollar store or Blick or wherever, but it, it allows you to see really the images when you start putting them down. Now this is a great way for artists to get some inspiration. 
So it's a great way for kids to have fun, but it's a, a great way for just to let your mind kind of free form and create some things that are just, just totally come out natural. So I'm just going to take a few of these and I'm just going to start, you know, laying down some shapes uh, that I've taken out. Um, and I've taken out some, some that are the, uh, this would be a negative shape and this would be the positive shape. So we've got that outline. I'm just going to throw that there and there. Let's throw in a little blue. It's really great to see what happens when you put some of these colors both next to one another and uh, on top of one another. Um, and although I don't want to think too much about it, I also want to create some shapes. Now you can do this very haphazardly by just kind of taking a bunch of these shapes holding them up and just letting them fall and see what you get. That's kind of a, a great surreal technique, um, which is quite fun. But I really like to see, because I, I love the, uh, the colors of some of the construction paper that, that you can find. Um, and just seeing how you can create some interesting forms overlapping some things, uh, creating some shape. And again, we're not trying to necessarily make anything, um, create something that is representational. Uh, we just want to play around with some of these colors, the shapes, see how they work together how they might create interesting images. And then you can take parts or all and try to replicate this in the form of a painting if you so desired. So this is a great exercise to start learning uh, composition, especially for kids. It's like doing a puzzle, only it's much more artful, um, sort of less cerebral and more artful. Let's get some little pink over here. Okay, let's let's take and put a little different pink in there. Like that. See how the the colors work with one another, um, whether they how they play off of each other. Uh, let's take some purple. I really like purple. I like how it works with some of the uh, great. One of the things I find is just randomly working and cutting off. I don't draw imagery onto these sheets. I just randomly take out the, the objects with my uh, X-Acto knife and I find that it's much more satisfying because it really takes my brain, which uh, sometimes at best is only working half the time, uh, it takes it sort of out of the picture. It takes that sense of what's right and wrong out of the picture because sometimes we can get so caught up in that that it stymies or stifles our creative nature. Um, no, if I really want that. Let's have some, some darker green in here. Got some interesting. So I've, I've gone with some more organic round shapes to some geometric patterns. And I think the combination of the two is very interesting. And again, none of these shapes or things are pre-planned out. I just start cutting. And this is, this is what happens. It can also be rather relaxing. So if you're feeling a little tense, you're feeling a little anxious uh, because of these times that we're in and you, you need to take your mind off of, off of something, um, 
this is a great way to do that. It's a great way just to create a space uh, that is colorful, pleasant, uh, non-threatening. Um, it, can, it can really take your mind off things. Kind of like a puzzle where you're constantly searching, only this uses a little bit more of that other side of the brain. Okay, so I don't think I've used my dark blue, so we're going to throw a little dark blue in there. See what that looks like on some of these. And some of them you might want to overlap, some of them you may not want to, some of them you may want to create, um, you know, on top of one another to see how they play, they play off of one another. Um, you know, it's really just, and if you don't like something, then you just take it off. Like if you think that that looks like too much, then just take that off. If you want to replace it with something that's a, a little more punchy, a little bit more fun and organic, and you throw that in there. So you, this is a good way to kind of check how color balances throughout a, a work without expending a whole lot of money in both canvas, in paint, um, in time where you think, oh, I, I just don't like that. You can sort of use this as a template. So this is uh, creating with construction paper and a fun way now you can make, uh, as, as we saw in an earlier vid video with uh, Ron Hall, where he did um, negative and positive space in the form of cartoons that uh, he created. This is kind of similar, only more abstract in thought. Um, but just have fun with it. Have fun and see how things play off of one another and then kind of study that look at look at the different things like what's the difference of the blue with the purple versus the blue with the darker pink or the blue with the yellow start thinking about your your colors in terms of opposites analogous color um, and, and see where that takes you. This looks a little busy to me. I don't, I don't really care for that. So I'm just gonna move that. And you'll, you'll notice after you stare at something for a while and kind of look at it, what, what you like and don't like about it. You can also use these to make uh, much figurative uh, works like Matisse did as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll show you another uh, image that you saw in the picture. Um, this one didn't have quite as many colors and has some organic but also touches on some realistic shapes like leaves and maybe a cat or a dog and windows, things like that. So really appreciate you tuning in to Rancho Cordova Arts. We are here to help you become a more creative you, to help inspire you, and to help you through this difficult time. If you'd like to join us, you can join us at RanchoCordovaArts.org. We are only $25 a year to become a member. If you're a student, it's only $15 a year, and a family membership is only $40. And we're a fun group. We have a lot of uh, different events and things to participate in, uh, things to bring art to our community in Rancho Cordova. And we would love to see you there. Whatever you create, please send us your, uh, your images. Post them on our Facebook page. We want to see what you're creating during this time. And we appreciate you all so much. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay happy, and we'll see you next time. This is Cheryl Gleason from Rancho Cordova Arts. Till next time.